let's bring on our next guest, uh, Jenny Townsend of Unsabotage. Jenny, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. All right, my pleasure. Give our our investing audience some, some background on you, and then let's get into these glass walls you're talking about. Yes, absolutely. So my professional background is in strategic marketing. So I worked for a Fortune 100 in their um, marketing department for a number of years and then moved um, to Northern California, where I spent time running a creative agency and then also building companies in tech. And so my current project right now is called Unsabotage. Thank you so much for the introduction. You're welcome. All right. Um, glass walls. What are they? What are the, I mean, how do people set them up and how do you break them down to turn what you're doing into something that you should be doing? Exactly. So they're not glass ceilings, in case your listeners are wondering. <laughs> Those are externally imposed and you know, they speak much more to um, something happening on a macro level versus anyone's individual talents or capabilities. But glass walls, they are these barriers that we kind of inten- unintentionally put up in our own way, and they come into our lives from experiences that we've had anywhere from grade school to maybe even a meeting we were in yesterday that, that limit the way that we think. So um, they, they take shape as either limiting thoughts, so thoughts that, you know, they're very self-descriptive, they limit or as old habits. So they may have served us really well going through graduate school, but now, you know, as we're in our current position, they're actually holding us back. Okay. Um, Let's talk about how your background in strategic marketing helps you discover the the glass walls. Yes. So I actually, when I was running that creative agency, discovered that I was holding myself back and it really took me off guard. So I, after about a month of just like, what do I do? This isn't as far as I'm going to go. I had this idea of like, what if I point all of these exercises and these, these strategies and resources that we use to help cities define their brand or universities, you know, like the wealthiest university in the world, as an example, what if, if it's good enough for them? What if we point these, these tools and resources at ourselves to uplevel our own game? And um, it's, what's really interesting is as more and more innovation happens, and I was listening to your previous guest talking about with cryptocurrency and other things, our, our biggest differentiator, because industries will change, things that, be, are, that feel really new and the direction of where things are going, those will often fade away. But our biggest differentiator is knowing our, our mind, knowing that these barriers that may have been set up without us knowing, we have the complete ability to shatter them and move forward in our careers. Give Hi, me- Jeannie. Uh, this is Ed Baxter of Bison Creek Capital, and I'm just going to cut Michael off there. He enjoyed that, but <laughs> and that, uh, and I wasn't one talking about the crypto. So one thing you're talking about is, is really what amounts to uh, defense mechanisms that we create in our own mind as a function of the environments that we grow up in. How difficult is it for you to identify those or teach people to identify those and look for ways to try to improve? So actually, it's, it's not that difficult. I became my own guinea pig and was my own guinea pig. I was kind of this mad scientist for a couple years. Um, and really what I have discovered is there's about 12 to 15 specific glass walls um, that I see in my own life and in my clients' lives. So it's just honestly, it's having the roadmap. So it may seem nebulous and kind of impossible because, and that's the thing about glass walls, why I really like that analogy, is you can see right through them and you can just run right into them if you don't know they're there. But, but knowing the step-by-step process, how to actually extract those thoughts, um, and once you see them on a screen or once you see them on paper, if you actually write it out, it, it becomes so clear. Okay, the, let, thank you for that answer for Ed's. Mm-hmm. Um, question, but the, where I was going is something you said earlier, and that was using the techniques that universities and cities mm-hmm. use to brand themselves. Uh, I would like to get some some key insights on that, you know, for my own personal use. I mean, I'm always working on branding either the new show or the the network or, or, or ourselves or the people that come on the show. Give me some insights on what you've seen work uh, on an enterprise level all the way down to somebody as small as my level. Sure. So the game changing moment that brought what is now unsabotage to life was, okay, so when we would interview key players for let's use that university, 
Um, we would interview their staff, prospective students, and people in the community. Um, how we would report the findings is we would take all of the hours and hours of transcripts of interviews, and we would put them into a word cloud generator. Are you familiar with what a word cloud is? Yes. Okay, great. And then that would pretty much be the title page. So it would really set the stage visually for what they would be reading about what this you know, client set said about them. So my first huge aha was, well, I've been journaling trying to figure this out for four or five months. What if I put all of my writings about myself into this word cloud generator? What would I see about my thoughts? And it was really the first time that I thought, hey, maybe journaling is more than cathartic. Maybe it's actually really strategic. And we can use this, this really simple method of getting our thoughts out of our mind onto our screen or onto a paper and see what is below the surface. Because that's really, we're like icebergs, you know? The wind doesn't move an iceberg. It's the current under the water that moves the iceberg. Got it. Um, I really got the answer I was looking for on that. Thank you very much. Let's, let's take a break, come back on the other side, and continue where we left off, all right? All right. We'll be right back with Jenny Townsend. She is the CEO of Unsabotage, unsabotage.com. You've been listening to CEO of Money with Michael Yorba and Ed Baxter. Segment brought to you by thevitaminpatch.com. Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Uh, listening to Jenny Townsend, founder and CEO of Unsabotage, unsabotage.com. Uh, Jenny, we're looking through the website and, and some of the thing, the work that you've done. And, you, you know, you've said in the past, icebergs and elephants can shed a lot of light on our glass walls. I, you, you started to touch on it last segment, but bring that out for us. Th- this yes, segment. absolutely. So, uh, like I said previously, we are so much like icebergs. And according to a study that came out a couple years ago by the Cleveland Clinic, the average person thinks about 60,000 thoughts every day. So that's about a thought a second of our waking hours. But what's really interesting about this study is they said 95% of the thoughts that we will think today, we thought yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before. And you know what? We'll think them tomorrow and the day after and the day after if nothing else changes. So it's it's really just 5% of our thoughts are really in our conscious mind. There's that 95, just really, it's, it's the super majority that is sitting in the driver's seat. If we don't kind of take stock and um, figure out what those thoughts actually are, interrogate them and actually see if we want them to direct our lives. Break down that process for me. Absolutely. So right now through the unsabotage model, I guide my students through very specific prompts to to um to let them dig into their thoughts in very specific areas so if you think like an archaeological dig you know there's there are grids right so they dig in one area and then they record and then they move to the other area and the other area until they have all of the grid has been represented so that's really the process of just taking the time that most of us just don't generally um take to dig into these areas and get our thoughts out so we can see them and, like I said, interrogate them. Sounds like you get a lot of aha moments in this process. Oh, my gosh. Yes. You know what I love about it is there's a lot of early wins. There's long-lasting change, but also there's a lot of early wins. Okay. So do you do this uh, on an individual basis or do you break it into, uh, let's say, departments and say this, this department needs to really break the glass wall so they can work better with each other versus starting at the CEO level and then just working down through the C-suites and then down through the directors, now through the managers and so on? That is a great question. So this is a very kind of individual process, even though the results and ramifications are very corporate and large. Um, So I walk students through their own journey. um, And this can be done in a, in a group or as well as just completely individually, if they want access to me at that level. But then it's the results. So, I mean, there are some parts of these thoughts that people may not want totally known, right? I mean, like, that's, so there's this kind of confidentiality piece of it. But then there is taking the learnings, taking the findings, knowing what that person's specific glass walls are. And then it's coming up with a game plan to once that glass, once it shows up again in their lives, because I definitely believe in the upward spiral of success versus a straight line. So you may have felt like, oh, wait, didn't I, didn't I come up against this? Didn't I fight this battle before? But you're just 
fighting it on the next level up. So if you expect that that specific brand of glass walls is going to be coming when you reach X amount of spot or you're trying something new, you can actually have a plan in place um, or what I call guardrails. So you don't run into it. Um, you can actually just bypass it as you continue up that spiral. Have you been able to track the um and I hate to be so analytical about this, but have you been able to track the bottom line repercussions? I'm talking about some a CEO that says, okay, I am going to employ you. I'm going to walk through this and practice what you're doing. And I want my C-suites and then so on to go through this individually. Is Are you seeing that it, that kind of result where they can go, okay, see, Mr. Shareholder, this investment in Jenny was worth it. You know, I haven't gone back to ask for any dollar figures. Um, and you know what? That's, that's a great challenge, and I accept that. I'll see what these, these people are willing to share with me. But what I have found is glass walls usually show up at the five-yard line of pursuing a big goal. Get, so what, it, what do you mean by that? I mean, the, now you've yeah, got an interest. So, what does that mean? It, that's great. Um, so, you know, you're just you're charging towards, you're really close to that touchdown. And then right before... Um, the goal is achieved, you kind of feel like you just ran into something you didn't see, which, you know, in my world, I call a glass wall. Okay. So the, you know, logic goes, if we can figure out what that glass wall is and, you know, make it irrelevant, shatter it, as it were, um, and then allow them to step forward and actually make that touchdown hit that goal. G- g- uh, give, me logic- a, give me a real world example of what you mean. And, uh, okay. Yeah. So one of my earlier glass walls that I'll, I'll, you know, I have my own company, right? Right. Um, one of my own glass walls that I discovered was this, this desire to, I was just waiting for permission to pursue something. If it was new or different or bigger than I'd done before, I didn't really, I wasn't consciously aware of it. I was waiting for permission. So if I'm trying to grow a company, if I'm trying to pursue bigger clients than I ever have before or adding new offerings or adding new team members, how on earth am I able to actually bring that to a touchdown, you know, bring that past that five yard line. If I feel like I'm waiting for permission, does that make sense? Okay. Kind of, but but versus just bursting through and say, here's my idea. I'm not so sure the path, but I'm going to head in that direction. Exactly. Well, yeah. And so once I realized that I had this, this underlying kind of like undercurrent thought of waiting for permission, I was able, when I felt like I couldn't move forward, ask myself, wait a minute, am I waiting for someone to give permission? Do I need, you know, or is this something, is this a strategic decision I'm making? And then once I knew why I was maybe stalling out or, or slowing down, losing momentum, I was able to put up like a guardrail in place and say, actually, this is my decision to make. I don't need to wait for someone else's permission. Let's end on that note. It's a good note to end on. Jenny, thanks for being a guest on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Jenny Townsend, founder, CEO, unsabotage.com.